So this is the main entryway of Printed Solid. This is where everybody comes to see the magic. And the first thing you notice over here is you have a bunch of filaments and you have a bunch of sir layers a lot. What's the purpose? Is this just to kind of show it off? Yeah, so, you know, one of the reasons why you'd want to go into a physical store versus just ordering something online is to be able to get in and touch things and check them out. So, you know, we've historically had lots of different samples of different kinds of things that are printed, but now yes. we're standardizing on having one thing, which is our nice uh, Sir Layers a Lot by Carmelo, and printing that in all our different materials. As you can see, we're starting on the process, but not <laughs> not through it. We it takes have, a while to do, right? Yeah, well, we're gonna, our goal is to do all the materials we've featured in MakerBox and everything we sell at Printed Solid, which is gonna get us up to about 450-ish. Wow. Yeah, so, um, you know, that's, that's a lot. This, <laughs> so. is, this is great, though. I like what you're saying because it gives you a physical representation of the product and what it would look like right. after being sent through a nozzle, after being yeah. melted and formed into a cool model. And Sir Layers a lot. I do like this model. This yeah. is fun. And it features some cool parts on it that test a printer whether or not it can do certain things. Neat. 450? Yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah, That's thereabouts. Thereabouts. It, print it solid in MakerBox. Okay, that makes yeah. sense. And and so, you know, all the different materials and different colors and you can even get a little bit of a mechanical characterization out of it. Like this is uh, in Ninja Flex, so Dave printed these, and so that's Ninja Flex Cheetah, and this is just regular Ninja Flex. Oh, <laughs> oh it's <laughs> But check this one out. It's squishy. Oh, this feels like it was made out of rubber bands. Yeah, isn't that cool? That's fantastic. Okay, so over here, oh. we have the... Uh, there you go. Yeah, we have our newest addition to the fleet here. It's the Maker Gear M3. So it's a dual printer with the ID system where it has two heads, one axis. Well, I did see this at Bay Area Maker Fair one time. It looked like a really interesting machine. And uh, I, I just, people love their Maker Gear M2, so I'm not surprised that it looks well built and it yeah. looks like it's doing a really good job. Yeah, it's a cool, that. cool machine. Just yeah. these flat discs all the way across the plate. Yep, yep, full print bed, no problems at all. It has the, the BL Touch. Yeah. So, cool system. And then right next to the Ultimaker S5. Yeah. And you've Good got, time. Some additions. You've got uh, you've got a top on it. That's a printed solid top, right? Yes. Yeah. It's one of the enclosures that we manufacture. And then it's got the the vents or the ducts for. Yep. An this air is cleaner? the Bofa, Yeah. It's a Bofa filtration system, so it you know just moves a lot of air through. It has a HEPA activated carbon, um, so it's you know industry where they would otherwise be required to put it under a safety hood, a fume hood, or something like that. They can do this and not have to, you know, pay the facilities work. So that, that that's why. Oh, so usually not a home kind of install. Some people do it. Well, sure, but an Ultimaker S5 isn't typically a home typically installed not. printer. Yeah, so yeah. for the industries and the people that are going to be getting an S5, there's this solution for the printed solid yeah. enclosure up top to put a Bofa air filtration system on it. Yeah, I find it a little bit weird that a thousand dollar product is a cost savings, but <laughs> it really is, you know, versus, you know, having to do work on a facility. Sure. Pull a permit. No, it makes sense. That. It makes sense. Yeah. This isn't this isn't meant for the user at home right. usually. Right. Unless unless you're doing twenty four seven stinky ABS printing or right. whatever. Right. Yeah. Let's just go around the room here. Sure. So next we have this shelf full of wonderful things. Yep. Is there a method to the madness over here? There is. So all these these pieces, these are just showing the different flexibilities of different materials. So exactly what I was just showing you with oh. the Sir Layer. So a lot that is DuPont Serlin. So it's like- Serlin. Yeah. Yeah, so a du DuPont material, um, rather challenging to get any overhangs, but it's pretty nice clarity and an interesting flex. That's a graphene filled PLA, Graphalon. Graphalon, that's Graphalon. a fun name. Yeah, they're most, yeah, then, most of them are labeled. Oh, I see. Oh, and then Cheetah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wee. Yeah. That's fun. Okay, yeah, it's that's really that just is neat comparing the different things. That's these up here, but yeah. I mean, the, are these and models these, that you printed or others have printed? Uh, or? So on this shelf, it's primarily models that we've printed and you know, mostly other people's models. We have the link on the table there for. Uh, the attribution. Mm -hmm. But yeah, this shelf is kind of showing finishing techniques and a little bit of material characteristics. Um, you know, like we have the protopasta magnetic iron there that's with the magnets in it. Oh, yeah. Um, that's cool. Then we have the, I haven't seen much of this material, but it's the, uh, the 
Flexion, the X60. Oh, the super flexible stuff. Yeah, and stuff. that's compared to regular Ninja Flex. And we cut it in half because we thought they were playing funny business with the infill, but yeah. it's the same infills. And yeah, so that's you know that's what that shelf is. Then then we're showing functional parts because a lot of people walk in and say, you know, what what can I do that's real with a 3D printer? So sure. we, we try to you know as there's functional things, you know, real parts, we'll make an extra one and put it on the shelf. Like you know, some dentist was making actually casting his own braces, so we printed that for him. <laughs> that's actually someone's teeth. That's fantastic. Yeah. Cool. And then of course just to. A big low poly shark because yeah. why not? Everybody because, needs a low poly yeah. shark. That guy needs to get hung on the wall. He just, he just really hasn't does. been hung on that's, the wall yet. That's fantastic. <laughs> Over here, just uh, just something. Yeah. Is anything specific? There used to be the here? mass portal there, but we don't have the mass portal there anymore. So. Okay. So now sometimes it's a, we just put things there. So now it's a pretty vase. Yeah, that's okay. our uh, midnight blue. It's really nice. This is something that uh, a lot of people really like, right? This is the printed solid. It's not a gumball machine, it's a model machine, right? Yeah. So this is, you know, kids love this. So when we do maker fairs mm -hmm. and things like that, the very first maker fair that I ever did, I printed up what I thought was a huge number. I printed up a hundred uh, little robots or Marvins or something. Yeah. And um, they were gone in about five minutes. So I said, you know, what if people had to pay a quarter for them? That would that would limit it. I, then I found how much the capsules cost and it was like 20 cents. Like, all right, it has to be more than a quarter. So I got that, this 50 cent machine. And yeah, so now it, you know, kids come up to the table and if they have 50 cents, they, they buy it and they have their own little printed, 3D printed thing. Well, not only that, but the, the method of delivery is fun. Yeah, there, there's exactly. A, there's, a, there's a thing here, yeah. right? I mean, if you buy gum from a machine like this, gum doesn't last forever, but it provides you some enjoyment. Right. Just like these models may not last yeah, forever, but you, know, you get a little bit of enjoyment. And there's a barrier to entry. So not everybody is just going to be grabby at your table. Right. It really does reduce the grabbiness at the table. That's the best value. 20 cents a piece, huh? It was something like, you know, if you're not buying many. Yeah. It, yeah. That makes sense. I guess we could, could have 3D printed our own. I guess so. I don't know. Do you know anyone with a 3D printer? No. Here's the polisher. Yep, the Polymaker Polisher. I do like that machine. I remember yep. when I took it out. I haven't had the chance to use it much yet. Do you guys use it a lot? Uh, we haven't used it a ton. Um, You're going to use it for your uh, Sir Layers a lot, we are, right? Uh, we're going to do a series of Sir Layers a lot with different exposure times. So it's in, you know, it's in the clear poly smooth. Okay. So it should come out pretty clear, I think. It's uh, just two perimeters. Oh, there's no info. Two perimeters and hollow. Okay. So, you know, we've done vases like that and they've come out really crystal clear. Ooh. So, you know, we're going to do varying exposure times and just see if we can get it from just nice and crystal clear down to melted. One thing you're going to run into is the inner skin isn't going to be polished. We could put holes in the bottom. You could. You could and swish around some yeah. ice Maybe I'll cut the bottom off. But I found that when I was bottom. doing the, the clear stuff, when I did the benching in the bottle, the clear poly smooth was not clear because I couldn't apply it to both sides. So I had to okay. swish around some stuff. But if you did put a little hole in the bottom of yeah. some layers a lot, and you did swish around some isopropyl alcohol, you might be onto something. Yeah, we'll see. And speaking of Sir Layers a lot, that's huge. Yeah, that's NGen Lux. Okay. Oh, we Ooh. talked about that in the MakerBox video. Yeah. It's a beautiful material. Yep. Yeah, it needs a little bit of cleanup on that guy, okay. but it's uh, that's fine. Oh, that's yeah. an easy cleanup right that's there. That's an easy cleanup. That's, a, that's one of those things where even though the print isn't perfect, you know that cleanup can happen, and so exactly. you don't stop the print. You know, you don't kill it. You yeah. You just make do. And sometimes you think of 3D printing as a step, a step to get to your final object. Oh sure. You talk to any prop step. builder, you exactly. know, that's what's going to happen. Next, I have still those about Mini Two, and this is uh, oh, it's got your enclosure on it. Yep. And these, do we get to say what these are? The ABS pieces. Yeah. Yes, we we can say what the ABS okay. pieces. Okay. Okay. Cool. This is it, it either will have launched or will be launching soon from Lawsbot. Okay. And it's it's neat though. I like that you still maintain visibility, but there's a lot less acrylic and ABS way tougher than acrylic. Yeah, yeah. Looks pretty cool too. It does give it a certain aesthetic that is pretty cool. I like that. Yeah. And I then you have the walls by green works as much well, of with course. the Well and you have it on the, the big that's the TAS six, right? Yep, TAS six. So you still maintain that you have to have the visibility. You need the acrylic on the front. But these ABS side panels and yeah, exactly, yeah, because you know a big user of Lulzbot is schools, mm -hmm. and the kids. I mean, everybody wants to see your three D printer. Sure, you don't want to have it blocked off so you can't see it. But kids, especially, they want to see, they want to see. So you're having a nice wide open window. That's 
that's what's good about it. Well, this is great though, because an enclosure around this size of machine, I know is difficult, but it really gives it a certain look, a, mm -hmm. a professional look. Yes. So a makerspace or an educational facility, I think it behooves them to get in an enclosure for a larger machine because it's it's going to make it last longer because they won't have as many fingers in right. touching it at the very least. Cool. Yeah, we oh. see a lot of these decisions being driven by environmental safety officers and things like that. So, makes sense. Yeah. And you still have the Ultimakers. I remember when I was here last, you had the Ultimaker 2 Plus and an Ultimaker Go. Yep, and the Extended. Might oh, have been okay. sitting yep. somewhere different, yeah, yeah, but yeah. yeah, and the original, which is still here. Oh, there it is. Look yeah. at that. And that shelf was over there last time, but yep. just more cool prints. Yeah, that one is. So the top shelf there is uh, kind of customer featured prints. Okay. And then uh, next shelf is mostly print and place type models with a bunch of other stuff that I just needed space for. And then the one below it is just assorted geekery. Well, this is just building one. This I mean, we still, you want to go around in here yeah, real quick? we can take a peek in Let's the inside. Let's take a peek. See, compare it to where everybody was. And... Okay. Wow, look at this. This is fantastic. It's so much different than the last time I was here. There's more of everything. Yep. Yeah, we... Uh, <laughs> You know, we've when you were here before, all we had was that back aisle, the the very back row of materials. Right now, over there. Yeah, now so now we have an additional row. We have the back room full. We have a bunch of pallets and pallet racking back there. Um, and you know, we're kind of at the capacity of what we can do in this building because we also host classes. So uh, we really can't. <laughs> we really. So can't. you make MakerBox here. You host classes yeah. here, and you have to store all sorts of product. Yeah, so we were able to get another building nearby. And you know, the biggest change since you're here is that I have merged my company with David's company. Oh. And so, uh, you know, my partner, new partner, David Randolph is, uh, has a lot of experience making enclosures and you know, laser cutting and different manufacturing techniques. Oh. So I'm gonna hand you off to David to uh, go check his building out now. Oh, there's another building. There is. Okay. Hey, Dave. Hey, how's it going? Going great. Good to see you. Got a good tour from Matt, but apparently there's another building. Yes. And that's your building. Yes. Can we go see it? Absolutely. I'd love to take you. Oh, yes. Let's go. All right. So this is building two. Wow. Yeah, this is my building. It's a little smaller than I imagined. Oh, is that your laser? No, that's my small one. <laughs> your small laser. Yeah, I just had a tiny one here, but we, this one was our fiber laser. We use this just for engraving uh, butter knives, or sorry, technically clam knives <laughs> for uh, Lulzbot. We do oh. all the, so every Lulzbot printer has, you know, our engravings in it. So it's That's great. Nice. Well, and it looks like it's ready to go. Can we see it? Absolutely. So what I'll do here is I'll turn on my little red light that actually tells me that it's all ready to go. And then all I have to do is actually just hit mark and it'll be good. Oh, okay, great. All right. Wow, look at it go. That's really cool. I know it's impressive. What I'll do is one knife after another and we can get through about 2,000 of these in a single day. That's amazing. Wow, okay, that's cool. Lasers are awesome. Trust me, it's my addiction. Wow, that's really cool. You did say that's your smaller one though. Are there bigger lasers on, on deck here? A little bit bigger. Little bit bigger. Is it through that door? Yes, it is. Okay. Wow, this is impressive, Dave. Oh, thank you. This is a heck of a building. So. Let's start here. So this is our manufacturing building. So we, we split, you know, like, like Matt was talking about, we split the company kind of into two subsections. We have manufacturing and then we have sales. This is, this is my space. This is, <laughs> this is my fun time. And uh, what I'm doing over here is we're primarily making enclosures for 3D printers. Oh, okay. Uh, but we also have other companies you know, that are relatively local here, a lot in the medical industry, and we actually do a lot of their laser cutting and some of their milling and marking and things like that. Oh, okay. So it's a lot of fun. And- It looks like this is where fun can be had. It, yeah, oh, absolutely. Um, we run three separate laser cutters here, and my biggest one is a four foot by eight foot cutter. Oh my god. Running at 150 watts. That's my smallest laser cutter here that actually does for cutting is three foot by four foot at 100 watts. That's your smallest. That's my, that's my baby. Uh, that, that I just use that for little stuff. But that's our space and we actually get through a lot of materials. We're cutting acrylic here, we're cutting polycarb, we're cutting MDF, melamine, ABS, Delrin, styrene. We kind of get through all those materials. And one of our benefits here, being able to do all these different materials, is that it makes us unique because we actually do, uh, one, we do recycling of all the different materials. Oh, that, that's okay. A, that's important for us. We, so we, everything that's left over from the cuts, you everything can recycle. Everything that's left over from the cut, we, uh, we recycle it. Okay. We send them out on giant pallets, all our scraps, and we have a company come 
come pick them up just for that That's reason. Fantastic. We have to sort it and all that. But the other thing is, when you cut those materials, they actually put off a lot of volatile off gassing. Yes, they do. And we're one of the few laser cutting houses around here that actually do a full filtration of all of the exhaust fumes from the cutters to make sure that we're completely safe and compliant and we don't have any upset neighbors, we're good for the environment, the whole nine oh, yards. Oh, so you're not just doing it for the air in here, but also any of the exhaust outside of the building is cleaned as well. Absolutely, we have, we have to make sure we do that. We're, we're, we're near a lot of nature, we're near an Amtrak, so we have to be real careful. You know, we don't want to have two people on the plane or on the uh, trains that are going on there. We like to make sure we're doing our part type of right. thing. Right. It's, it's kind of fun. So then if we start here, this, these, these must be the materials right These here. are our materials. You know, these are, uh, this is the uh, melamine MDF combos that we use. And we, this is what we make our, um, you know, enclosures for the uh, awkward size printers, the awkward configuration ones like the Perusas and the CR10s and okay. things like that. And then we have uh, styrene sheets. I use this a lot. Uh, this uh, siren is almost exclusively for Lulzbot. For their uh, Mini 2 printers, they have a nice smooth screen protector over their screen. Mm -hmm. We use this just for that. We cut all the screens for all the Mini 2s that are in production. Wow, okay. And then we have a polycarbonate sheeting here, which is what we use to uh, make sure that they can actually pass all their electric static testing for the TAS 6 printer. So every TAS 6 printer also has our laser cutting surfaces on top of that as well. That's fantastic. So every Lowell's bot out there has something with us. Then we also do like Delrin, that's primarily what we use for uh, medical stuff and things, okay. like, things along those lines. And then we have ABS, which we're uh, starting to launch a couple of new enclosures with ABS on them rather than acrylic to give them a little more structural rigidity. Oh, okay, because the ABS itself is gonna be strong, str it's gonna be less prone to breaking than acrylic. Correct, okay. but you can't see through it, so it's kind of give and trade, You're like I can't, so we have to put it on the sides and places people don't sure. really look through. And uh, we also cut, um, custom cut all of our PEI sheets here. I actually get pure Ultim and the 3M um, um, adhesive applied and then I cut it to size here. So it lets us do better than to actually just make like just square sh uh, squares for people. Right. So we'll, we'll oh, cut yeah, them we go around the clips. Yeah. Most build sheets you send to people, they're almost to size, then you have to take a sharp blade, take them off. So what you're saying is an Ultimaker, a Taz, a CR10, anything, you could get a laser cut PEI sheet specifically for that build plate. Right, we, we, we actually still oversize because it's always better to trim because if you've ever tried to put one down, it doesn't quite fit right, or you, you, you're not quite perfectly square when you put the sticker down. But for like the Ultimaker printers, they have those clips on the bed. Right. And we have to, we cut out for those clips. Oh, okay. And we still leave some extra flashing so people can trim off the corners and make it really nice So still and less tight. waste. Still less waste. Okay. But it actually fits and works with the printer. So there's That's some cool. of that kind of stuff. It's kind of fun. That's kind of cool. So these are the materials, these obviously. Are the materials. They come in through any of these, a number of these doors. The materials, I would imagine, come, come, over, come here over here to this giant machine. This is a laser cutter, right? This is a laser cutter. And this is our Wilma. Wilma. Uh, it's named Wilma because the company that actually made this machine uh, called it Wilma. But okay. that company is now defunct and owned by uh, another laser company. So you can't get Wilma anymore. And I actually found this machine uh, rusting away in a trailer in uh, Pennsylvania <laughs> and got it up and running and, re and recovered it. And That's cool. Did all my upgrades. It's phenomenally loud and that sounds, it's fans, right? That's all fans. The laser itself is very quiet. It's just the cooling and the exhaust. In oh. fact, what you're listening to is all exhaust. I'm moving about 1200 CFM just to exhaust this outside. Oh, and so any anything that you're cutting in here, the fumes aren't staying in here. I have to protect going my outside. workers. Sure, but at the same, okay, so you said you're still exhausting outside. Yes. So any of the stuff that you cut that puts off the heinous gases, you can't cut on this one, right? This one we do not cut because there is a little bit of air leakage on this machine and I don't want to risk my workers or risk any of that getting outside just okay. in case. Okay, because there's a couple more back here. And then I have more machines back here that we use. And then of course I have my machines properly named Red 1 and Red 2. Sure. And these are my well-sealed machines. And each one of these machines is actually pumping out 800 CFM. Okay. Uh, uh, um, through a filtration system. And this is what I cut my uh, stuff that could be considered toxic. Okay, coming to the, when I'm over with this machine, it's not a good smell. Right. Obviously. That's because all we do all day long is cut on it. Yeah. And, uh, you know, with a laser, you're ultimately burning. <laughs> sure. And, you know, we do ABS. And as people know, ABS It does off-gas. Yeah. Um, so you do get a little bit of that smell. Well, polycarb's going to off-gas. Polycarb, all of it off-gases. And that's the problem. So then, okay, so this is a, cut, this is a cutting machine. And 
This must be the filter? This is my filter. It's a, it's a giant filtration system. Uh, this one here is rated for about 2,000 CFM for the whole thing. <laughs> and it's what I use to actually filter both of my red machines. Both the machines, okay. Both of them run through that. And that there, as you can tell as soon as I open it, you can kind of smell a little bit off it of it. It does not smell pleasant. And uh, this one here, I had this machine built for me my Pacific purposes. Uh, this is a fire stop. Okay. The reason why is in case there's ever a fire inside these machines, it's sucking that air, which means it sucks this vortex of flame. That's right. This stops that. Oh, that's good. Okay, good, so good, that's good. that's what that serves for, is just to make sure that the flame doesn't reach the outside. And then there's these bags above it. And then this is all of the kind of air filter. This is what gets all the large particulates and all that stuff. Okay. But it doesn't get off the VOCs. So at the top here, I've got 200 pounds of activated charcoal. Uh, 200 tri pounds, tri wow. Try me loading this by hand. This was yeah. very difficult. And 200 pounds of activated charcoal up here, and that does the rest before we exhaust outside. Okay. So that's our whole machine. Uh, this machine's uh, got safety It does stink switches. a little bit when you open that. Yes. Wow. We don't open it very often. No. Every six months, I go in there and change out all the filters and the charcoal, and it's icky. Right behind you, this is ultimately what we're doing. Oh! These are our enclosures. Right. These are, these are our most popular enclosures. So, uh, ah, these are the Ultimaker doors, aren't they? These are the Ultimaker doors. Yeah. So I got some Ultimaker 2s and Ultimaker 3 kits here that are waiting to get boxed up. Okay. And so we cut them all out of a, a cast acrylic um, that's actually, we've talked to the manufacturers, we've talked to our distributors, we get very specific acrylic that's a, the strongest version of acrylic because acrylic is a delicate material. Absolutely. We try to at least get the strongest material we can for that and we've engineered them as best we can in that situation. But then we actually glue the hinges for all the doors for everybody here, mainly because uh, when we first started, we relied on the end users to glue it and realized that no, they no. should not be gluing it. No. So we do it for them and then we package it up that way. Okay, but it looks like you have a good process here for getting it all done and then you can pack it up and send it on its way. Absolutely, and we got them all that. We got some Prusa kits and CR10s down there, the whole nine yards. And we've done really well with this over the last uh, year and a half at Printed Solid. I've been doing these enclosures since about 2008, going back to the original Thingomatic and the replicators and all of those. Oh! So I've been doing all these enclosures for that long. Um, with the success here at Printed Solid, it's given us the ability to expand our manufacturing and we're going to be working on getting into some other products going into next year. Okay. Well, I'm excited to see that. Oh yeah, me too. I'll, I'll have to come back, you know, and, and, and see as it grows. Wow. Thanks for the tour, Dave. Well, my pleasure. Thanks for coming out. I appreciate that. I'm really glad I got to see all this. Lasers are cool, and it's good to see Printed Solid expand beyond just being a materials reseller. I actually getting into this, this the manufacturing side of things and providing a high bar of quality for the parts that go out. That's awesome, and I'm glad to see it expanding. Whew, it's cold out here. That was a lot of fun. A big thanks for Printed Solid for bringing me out. And I'm really happy that I got the chance to talk with Matt and with Dave and get that tour. And don't forget, MakerBox is a lot of fun. I had a really good time putting that box together. And if you want 25% off your first month, there's a link in the description. Use my code, you'll get it. But uh, it's, it's cold out here in Delaware and I wanna, I wanna go to a warm place. So don't forget to hug each other more. I love you guys, as always. High five.